some of these teams performing in this week as well. Now, game one of the week has started. We are back to the good old, good old in Irangle. I mean, on, on, honestly, Miramar is kind of becoming a good old, good old. But uh, this time around, it's going to be Irangle. It's going to be for the entire day. And then tomorrow, we'll head on over to Miramar. Wolf, they're going to be jumping out early on. No big surprises there. They'll take a little ground there. And then Windside, they're making their way on over towards the Novo side of things. So uh, no really, really big surprises so far for AK back towards the military island. We got Tornado Energy inside of Milta. So yeah, so far, so good. No big... Uh, <gasps> kind of moments up until this point. And for those of you guys, of course, who are maybe not watching the map as much as you want to, who may be seeing people do something that they don't want to be looking at, but they just want to follow their one team, you can do exclamation mark map in the chat, I believe. Should be linked linked over to the um, to the map stream, and then you'll be able to, um, to, watch, to watch everything at all times over there. You can watch all those rotations coming in. It's really good, especially if you have two monitors to, to sit around there and watch Watch both the, the live feed and the, the, the map feed as well, as you'll get so much more info to work around. Let's see, let's see, Talons. They're getting their split loot. They kind of committed to this one last week. Okay, so we had so we had Art of War and Seven kind of fighting for Pachinki for the shortest amount of time. And now with this circle going north, fortunately for Art of War, they're not down with Pachinki anymore. They'll have an easier access to because this river, this river indeed could end up becoming fatal for some of these teams. We tell you it and we see it time and time again. Which side do you commit to? Do you go up north or do you stick down south? Well, I wouldn't know where to go if I was a team in this one. Yeah, it's one of those ones where you have to make the choice on the split. Mm. Swarm's got a lot of room to work with here, though, in Georgia Pole. They've got it all covered. It's going to be a huge looting spree for them. No real contesting yeah. going on there. I want to be seeing what Vinko's going to do as well, right? Because we spoke about these guys towards the end of the first week. And mm -hmm. they obviously, on the last day, really played their hearts out. Things started to look better for them. Better placements, but not as many kills. But one thing they were very vocal about on Twitter was... Oh, well, we know what we need to do over this next week. We're already aware of what we're going to be changing up. So I just love the fact that they, they certainly had a plan of what improvements they needed to make and how they want to kind of bounce back into this because they're down there within the, the bottom 14 teams, and mm. um, well, 14, 15th and 16th even, um, them and Thailand's. But, like, they are still hungry as hell to make sure they can get this done and, and climb their way up. Also, we got to keep in mind that I know they've said that it's not the biggest of deal because they're used to it, but they are playing, I believe, from South Africa. So, I mean, there's got to be a ping issue there, right? Whether it comes in as an advantage or becomes a disadvantage in fights and rotations and those peaks against your opponents, not to say, but it sure does play somewhat of a... Um of a factor in all of this. Now we see Tornado Energy. They're, of course, looting in Milton. We'll have a little bit of a distance to travel, but shouldn't be shouldn't be the biggest issue for them at all. We have seen a lot in this group in particular of these northern circles up and around Severny and just, I mean, ugh, I don't know. It's a rough area. I mean, w w there was a little while back a, I guess it was kind of a scare moment for a lot of people in competitive PUBG when there was some uh, some data mining showing a new wrinkle that would give us, I think it was like 96 more compounds on the map, and everyone was like, wait, wait, no, 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 don't do this. Everyone was being very vocal about it. And uh, in my like, honestly, Severny, you, you could you could you could go with a few more houses here and there because it really is like if you don't get the barn, if you don't get the triple triple compound up there the, or the uh, crossroads, there is just not a whole lot to play around. See, my theory with this is it's colder up in the north, which means less people want the houses there, uh, so they weren't put there in the first the beaches, place. Though. Yeah, but the beaches are like fake beaches, you know? When you go there, you get the sea, you get the breeze, but you're just freezing your tits <laughs> off the whole time. <laughs> it's so Denmark, like 90% of the year. There you go. You're used <laughs> to it. See? <laughs> Flat area. We got beaches, yeah, but you don't want to go there unless <laughs> it's like actually warm. And the water is never warm, so yeah. <laughs> there you go. I've solved the Orangle mystery. Of it's the cold northern areas. Yeah, it does make sense. Now, uh, quick math. They're uh, rotating maybe a bit too early. They could have had themselves a crate. I'm not sure if they saw it. It seems like they didn't. 3D Max, also a team that we can throw in the mentions. We saw them do extremely well in the group stage of the kickoff cup. And then, uh, well, I mean, they didn't do that well in the Ooh. finals. And also, they haven't been doing as well here. Now, Stella and Talents finding one another over on the side of Watertown. Seems to me like Talons are indeed taking casualties, but Jembo Week goes down and return. Yeah, so just a straight trade out here. This is not what either team would have wanted. Mm -hmm. It's certainly not beneficial for 
them in this kind of scenario where, yes, Thailand's now have control of this compound to fight from, but the rest of Stella can try and work their way into it, go and help Cairns back yeah. up if that's an option. But they've also got Art of War nearby, who certainly will hear some of these shots going on. Kaz, though, successfully ran his way down. He's going under the bridge. They've gone on the hunt for him, but he's already got long out of there. I think Thailand's realized that it was a 2-2 split, or at least that there clearly wasn't four people over there, considering that only one vehicle came running by, and they're like, you know what? We need the points. We can take a 4v2. And they did get one kill, but they lost one in return. And now, as you said, Vag and Moleman have made their way over to Cass. So it's going to be tricky from here on out. And as you said as well, out of war, they have made their presence known. They're splitting 2-2 across the river. And this is what we're coming into play here. The river is pretty damn sent on things. And, uh, well, you've got you to you you take as much ground as you can because you don't want to be caught on the wrong side once it does commit to either or. 3D Max needs to be really careful as well. That knock mm -hmm. just happened around Quick Math and Elgig, who have already rotated up just a little bit north of the river on the other side. So they're going on more towards Severny. Quick Math have come down from the south. But that's a scary knock to have happen. Yeah. It's like, ah, oh, now we're out, now we've wasted time. And also, there's plenty of other teams around us. Also, teams, I mean, that's the thing. You don't really think about it too often because for the most part, these teams, they will have I mean, played against each other enough times to say, based on this circle, we know this team likes to go here normally or, or this and that. But when you're in a compound, if you haven't got a knock or gotten knocked, you don't know which team is shooting back at you. No. And the fact that they just got knocked and everyone sees it in the kill feed and maybe heard the bike flip as well, that's like, oh, okay, so 3D Max is over there. So not saying that that's going to be, a, oh, let's go engage him. It's just that's additional info you're providing your opponents that you could have avoided to do. Exactly that. Now, Tornado on your screens at the moment. They've got themselves control of the hill. They're going to be looking down and having a scope around at what other teams could be close by. Again, making sure they're aware of everything that's going on around them because they are currently one of our front runners here. Mm -hmm. And they've also been having some solid games over and over again. Now, they're the interesting team, though, right? Because they had a, the, the stand-in player come in when needed, right? Yeah. We saw two games where they used a, their fifth man. So... I just wonder, obviously we don't know if it was situational, maybe his internet died or something like that, or mm -hmm. if it was down mm -hmm. to just something was feeling a little bit better with that kind of that dynamic. I mean, uh, let's see this one, we're inside. They're catching off four-way cable to get anything off. With no next thieves, oh, there's a lot of fire. He's going to blow it. It's going to be multiple people trying to make the crossover. Have Hawkey tried to go into the passive machine and shoot, but he's going to go down. Uh, nope, not yet, not yet. He's still alive, burning vehicle, but gets out of it. Now he's taking fire from behind, though, and he's in a 1v4 situation here. Really good setup from WS here, because we got Donator in the background. He also did a lo lot of extra damage onto Havaki. Mm -hmm. Moon's got to be careful, spots him, goes up the stairs. We'll go on the hunt for him, but they need to do it as a teammate, but the nades come in anyway, and Daboom's able to get the knock-in. Got to count it up. How many nades did we throw again? <laughs> Don't want to run up too soon and get your head blown off. <laughs> you run into it, you're like, ah, oh, <laughs> damn it. I, I threw one more, sorry, guys. That's not what you want to have happen now. Windside, this is a good break for them as well. Coming off to a good start in this one, getting themselves two kills. And obviously, I mean, for 4AK, they were not at all anticipating this one. Normally, it's VG who has had a chance to sit down here. But Windside, they were sticking around a little while longer and got themselves a double kill off of that one. Good performance coming out for them, securing points early on. So we've got a pretty even split now how it's worked out. If anyone's looking at the map screen at the moment, we've got uh, roughly half the teams down south, half the teams up north, mm. and then good old Ronnie Cray having to escape Military Island on his own. He's failed at wanting to try and fight off against WS, and he's now going over towards the eastern side. We'll have a long rotation up, but it is only phase one, so not a lot of damage. He will be fine regardless of it, but what he will have to be careful of is just any other teams that might want to keep him at bay, because mm. you know WS will be quite happy to finish him and the rest of the team off. You see Moon Wolf, I think Reza just heard the guys pulling up in the compound just south of them, so they'll make the rotation continuously further around the eastern side. Came all the way in from the southern area of Milta Power and have now made it up towards Severny. New Circle Pups, it doesn't guarantee, but for the most part, shows us that the circle is going to go up on the northern side of the river, so I assume to see most teams make those rotations on over into the foresty sides just south of shooting range. Who's going to be the Maxisaur of this week? We didn't really have a Maxisaur, did we? For, like, no, there, there are some, there are some pretty, pretty talented bold action players in this group, but I'm, I'm just... They're just not... They, they, we'll they've let done them the same kind of damage, We'll right? let them impress us. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll throw it up for grabs. Who it's wants it's to definitely not decided yet. We had Clib and we had Maxisaur. They were the standout players from Group A yeah. with the bolts. <laughs> Let's see if someone on Group B maybe wants to solidify themselves with that kind of name as Moonwolf here. A little bit sneaky, coming up on behind Swarm. Nobody's got their rotation down. 
Actually, two Max tapping away, trying to catch some of the Elgig players as they make their way out of it. See, Wacko, he wants to get the kills as well, but more teams are rotating through this way. We talked about the hillsides up on the southern side of um, shooting range, and this is where all these teams are trying to get to, because there really aren't a whole lot of other places you can play from if you are trying to make your way in here. Neos does get on the bike, should be able to get away, but Hookstar went down to example. So Elke getting off to a bad start once again. We said this with this team, there's... They do struggle in the early parts. Their first rotations is where they start to lose multiple members, maybe being a little bit too overconfident with it. Mm. Thailand's finding himself another player getting knocked, and it's still Stella able to keep them at bay. Moonlight on the floor now. Pretty good distance to it, too, Max, securing himself a headshot. Over towards the guys they've been squaring up against for the longest of time so far. They've just been sitting here saying, you guys can stay in there, we'll stay over here, but we'll continuously shoot over towards you. Inside, they got themselves that bridge camp early on, and now they have to make themselves a rotation, and they're going far west over towards Georgia Pole. As you can see, a northwest gone down to the circle. Mise will go down as well, I believe. Mise was not by himself. I don't know what happened there, but uh, indeed he goes down. First game of the day, high pressure, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so it's like sat there, you go, ah, oh, man, making these mistakes. Won't yeah. happen for the rest of the games, promise. I and mean, if you've got to make them, then do them now and then get them out with and then play yeah. 15 flawless games after that. That's going to be the, uh, the go-to. Now, Vinko a little bit split. They're all kind of taking some yeah. ground, but they're not very much together. Neither of them have dared to cross, and as I say that, but do see Blue cross on over to the other side with Windside right in his he uh, on his heels. So that's going to be a tricky one. Northwest goes down, but it's indeed not for Angry Kids eliminated. Ronnie is still driving on the Blue, trying to make his way on over. And he's now finding Soda. I believe there's going to be more people going down. That's going to be a Serena gone down as well. Windside getting super aggressive here. Mm -hmm. Three kills already. They dealt the damage onto four Angry Kids, and now they've tried to... Shut down Vinko is oh. blue. Looking to get himself in a position to escape. The boom trying to tap away at him. Is that a one wheel you a uh, one wheel buggy? And he's just like, uh, let me get away, <laughs> let me get away. So much more damage being done to him. They was even pushing forward. The NATO went forward in the car and still jumped out to try and take him out. And they will find blue, which means Vinko only have the Dexo left in it. And that's four kills for these guys as well. Oh my god, this circle just went south. Yeah, we said it can still, there's a potential it can go mm -hmm. south, but my, oh my, it decided to go all the way down. Ruin still included. Stella, they're going to be pretty happy with this. Yeah. They will probably want to cross over to the northern side now, though. We do know that that northern side up there is very open, especially around the field there in the middle, just when you cross over. We have a steep hill on up to begin with, just on the, well, bottom side of where Talents is sitting right now. And then, uh, then everything is pretty much uphill from there. It's really difficult to play around, and if you don't get a spot early and hold it, and there's no way in hell you're getting inside the circle. Well, seven have become active already, but this time it's quite early on at 13 minute mark. They'll find themselves one kill onto the Moon Wolf players as they start their rotations in near towards Severny, but then none of them are in the circle. Mm -hmm. I mean, in all fairness, we lost 11 players already and we're just 13 minutes in. Clearly, clearly teams are coming out today, or maybe it's just this circle in particular, but teams are coming out today with aggression we did not see from them in week two. Yeah, even just that setup right from windside off mm -hmm, to start holding sure. the bridge. They would have never done that before. They were always rotating in well ahead of 4AK. Yeah, at least not sitting around and camping very long. That's for sure. Millman trying to spot out some of the guys in the compound, but he gets some bullets in return. Calvin securing them right there, but no knocks coming in so far. Now he takes a headshot towards him, and the thing is for him, you can see right now, he's kind of isolated on the hay bales down there. Has to play it smart because they do have other teams around them. And you said about Desperado, you want to see more from them come out this week. They have so many solid players on this lineup. We saw it before, right, where it was Cold Amenta held off that 3v1 mm -hmm. push coming in towards oh, yeah. him. Some individual great skills coming out from this team. And they started to get the placements and the points alongside it. So it could be an exciting week for them if they can keep this going. They are for sure a team that I would, uh, I guess I can, I can say, expect to see uh, playing for for potential spot in the, in the PEL Phase 3. But of course, there's still a distance to get or to go through before we get to that point. 16 games playing this week and then a solid group stage of four weeks where these top eight teams from Group 1 and top eight teams from Group B will get to square off against one another and trying to see if they can make it through. Deeks trying to make a long-range rotation here. They're coming in from the northern side. They lost Hookstar earlier. 
But uh, we still have a little bit of a distance to cover. Alia gets himself one knock off there. That's going to be apocalypse going down. Spots more players in the meantime as well. Four has got to be careful here. Pocket pinned down on his own as well. He's behind that tree. He's easily finished off. Swarm will start to make their approach forward. And for us, they're going to have to try and handle this. Nades start wow. to come out. And that is on point. Lars is the next one to go down. Betralius looking to try and hide himself up. And somehow, Alea manages to avoid... <laughs> the... what? That it's, the it's the hurt logger. It's the hurt logger. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Desperados have become active elsewhere, though. They're going to be going up onto Moonwolf as they will be eliminated by Desperados with a bit of help from Quick Map. And this is where we go now. We go south and now we go back north. Mm -hmm. We're up at the top and we're just closing out the rest of the water. Moonwolf tried to make that rotation in behind Desperados, but they were not going to let him have it. Now Tornado Energy losing a player. That's a little uh, unusual for them to do these sort of things. But of course, fortunately, there's no one sitting around in Rossox that they will have their backs clear for now. Swarm and for us, they're continuously fighting up here. Broken. You know, such Jax is down behind that tree, but how much time is he going to spend sitting around here? 25 seconds till the server closes in. Oh, broken. Ooh, Trying to hold it, but if Metralius lands a brilliant shot. It's going to keep him at bay. Ronnie! <laughs> Why not? He, he, he's got involved. He said, oh, I hear something going on. May as well mm. start and try. I mean, in all honesty, when there's 44 people up, there's no way you're going to get placement points, most likely, anyway. He does go down because of it, too. Unfortunately for him, but Swarm went down just before. Not that it's going to matter in the sense of placement points, but down they both go. Mithralius wants to go for the res here. Might be able to as well. Beyond this short closing side of things. Then it's all. No Savage on the other side. That's going to be him gone down, and most likely no res is coming in there either. Nades, nades, nades. Windside using them to their advantage. Still got four players up and running, and they have been active mm. in every position they have taken. Looking to fight it out. Deegs will die out for the zone, and oh, that was a nice one. The loss goes down, that's going to be El Gigantin out in 13th place. Talking about them, wanting to see them do something good here. They had a somewhat rough time on Miramar last week. They can make up for it here. They can make up for it for sure. It may not have been the start that El Gig wanted, and things were looking better towards the end of last week. Maybe that time needs to come in and things need to change now. Well, they have had a week break, and that is going to be a... Uh, oh, that has been a period where everybody has been sitting, watching through the watch, watching all the other teams play, and looking to what they're doing. Well, in all honesty, at least for the most part, the teams that have prepped themselves the best will most likely also be the teams that come out on top. I still don't have to move too far from here. Tarlands are still being gatekeeped out of it. The Dexos found himself a little bit close. You can just see him on the map there in the <laughs> corner. He's like, ah, yeah, he's, I'm on the island. He's chilling. But I am massively surrounded here. Well, I'm just going to try prone my way through. Interesting rotation from Windside as well, going underneath the bridge here, trying to see if they can sort of curve their way around PG. But as you can see, these and Nemeroth, they're not going to let them have it easy. They know exactly where they are. The Dexos even found a knock onto Moonlight as well. So Tarlan, as they try to move out, are going to find themselves under pressure. PG-18 dealing Ooh. away with this, no problem at all. Starting off strong, Nemeroth and D's getting it done. Moon's just out there in the back lines. The Zoo's up high, but the teammates are going to get finished off straight away into this. That's three kills already. Yeah, we're hitting circle five now as well. These circles are going to do a lot more damage. And keep in mind that we don't have to shift away from that water anymore. So it could go down to the river from where we are right now. Panko goes out. It's going to be Stella. Once again, them and Talons, they've been fighting since circle one. And it's coming to a close real soon. The boom goes down. Yannick gets to finish up on towards him and Moon now all by himself. The moon is stuck on the rocks. He had nades going out towards him. There's a lot of smoke giving him cover. But that's all he can hope for. That damage at phase four is less than ideal. Mm. He will be able to keep himself healed up, but it's for how long will they back away while that's going on as this new circle pops. And Art of War, Desperado's Quick Map and 3D Max are all going to be included, as is the Tornado Energy players and Mold Man from Stella. But Windside find themselves going out. The nade does eventually find Moon. Yeah, now we're hitting the point in which everybody coming in from the south. I mean, I'm going to put it this way. There's pretty much only room for one team on the south. And there's yes. four teams fighting for that spot right now. You've got Stella, you've got one player in VG, you've got a player in Thailand, and also the two guys remaining from Tornado Energy trying to see if they can sit on that southern side. But it's just so scarred. It's a big open hill, and there's no cover for for you guys to sit around there. The only room for one team. We'll see you'll make it. And right now, Peachy, they're doing everything they can to make their way across and up the hills here. Suppressive fire coming from Yannick, and it's keeping the seven players behind the tree.
Yeah, the timing and position that they were able to find there on PG-18. Mm -hmm. Catch seven on their run down to try and get into this circle. And now they're going to be facing off against each other with Krabic on the floor. The smoke goes down, which should allow them to bring him back up. Yeah. But PG have applied the pressure, and at least they've now said that, okay, look, you can't come down here so easy. You don't have all this space to work with. As the deck, so he's finally found as he tries to make his way off the island. Stella are going to get the job done, and Vinko will go out in 11th. It's a great play from PG as well. I think most teams would have tried to play more passive and sneak their way into yeah. the circle and then take fights, but they know we need to make room even before we get in there. If we want an extra team, we want to push them 100 meters further north to give us more space to work with once we do make our way into the circle. Now, they are all in in just a short moment, but as you can see on the map stream, if you're watching that one, that seven are indeed making their way down towards them. Desperados, they're widely split. You can see them all on your screen right now. No way in hell they can support one another should it come down to a close on fight but uh well, i mean they got the bigger chance of a circle i guess that is what they're gonna have to hope for at least there's melman from tornado he's down in the south at the moment on his own but there's he's definitely got to keep his wits about you can see him looking around see if anyone may mm. be crossing over and it's stella that he'll be able to find first yeah melman heard stella take out the deck so so they know that there's still players down on the southern side and he needs to deal with them we talked about it before there's simply not room for multiple teams on that south side of the circle so uh he needs to set a route maybe hope that he can get an off angle on one of them get a little moment of surprise and then we never know what he can do melman very very talented player has shown us time and time again This north and this east and west sides, literally 50% of the circle has a majority of teams. Seven out of our nine yeah. to fight it off. 23 of 27 players are sitting in the northern half of the circle. Yannick, good headshot up towards the Edelweiss, but they are within eight distance, of course. You saw it right there, Nate's coming down in their direction. Need to split out, need to worry about their backs as well. Great, great, great awareness from Yannick to not only focus on seven, but constantly looking behind them too. And that's how you stop yourself being caught by surprise. Making sure you are always looking around from every angle. New circles are going to pop up and we go more towards the north, which includes Desperado still. PG have worked their way in, but Melman finally found and an aid comes towards him. So Stella, mm. they've got full control once again. Important, side. important deal for them to get there. Now we see Shaxi trying to hold off. The guy's rotating around him. He's all by himself. The blue will take him down if quick math won't, that's for sure. He's sitting on the far edge of it. It's going to be extremely tricky for him to do anything from there. Now, 3D Max, they're wanting to make their way into the circle as well. It's going to be a tricky run. Cold Amenta gets one, so that's one of the traps from Desperados being sprung by opponents. Torsero could potentially be the next one up against the PG team because they're very far off the open. Colter, though, going down as Art of War secures that finish. You have a little steal with an eight there. <laughs> that was a hard one to tell who was going to grab that yeah, as well. They like, both huh. went at the same time. <laughs> The nade reigns supreme, and it seems to do that in a lot of the PUBG moments thus yeah. far. Now, Out of War already got themselves to a top eight position to try and fight from. Quite a nice one for these guys as well, because we spoke about them. They were really coming alive towards the end of last week. Mm. Tony coming out of his BM, and you've got to remember, he can only BM if they stay in the top eight in terms of points. So, he'll be good for now. He has to be a nice boy. She actually does go down, and Salento would have no more of it. So, so you know what? If you ain't going to come out of that house, I'll come in and take you out instead. But seven! Utilizing the time here to make a full-on push. You see them on your map in the bottom right corner there. Wag, I'm not sure exactly what he was shooting at there. But trying to stay alive for the Edelweiss. Now the full push comes in. And seven, the way they can steamroll. We know if we give them enough time to do this, it'll be tricky. And quick map, a cord in the middle. Quick map, I'm thinking, how on earth do we get out of here? There's not enough smoke to put cover in from every single direction. They're trying to hold on to this northern side of the circle with two teams encroaching on their position. Yeah, they have just become the ham in a French-Russian sandwich, pretty much. I'm trying to wonder what that would taste like. I know that's Russian salad. That looks like stuff you can put. And then French, I guess, that mustard. So that would be a weird combination. But then again, I've never tasted it together. So who knows? Making me hungry, Toby. <laughs> Making me hungry. <laughs> it's good when you get these little bits of lols during these, like, kind of the getting towards the final moments. circles. Yeah. Give us a moment to understand Tony's fra uh, Toby's phrases. <laughs> Quick oh, Matt does find oh. one, but they're under pressure from behind. You can see it right now. Pelts just can only shoot off so many bullets before he has to turn around and focus on what's going on behind him. It doesn't matter what Quick Map do. They fire at one team, the other team starts pushing up on him. Trying to hold this off is going to be so hard. And now he's all alone. He's stuck behind the tree. They know exactly where he is. 
does have nades, but he's not keen on using them. Wagger's going to find himself getting taken out by Art of War. The circle wow. hard shift down to the south, all the way down. It's only Stella. And yeah, only Stella in. Even Tozera's just on the outside. Cavs will find himself getting killed off by PG, though. And PG are staying active. And now they're going to go up against the team from seven at the same time. But Mole Man will steal away the kill on Kravik. I love the split from Stella right now. Two guys only alive, but they're spreading out in the south. And they're not allowing for anyone to push towards them. You can see the split they're going here. They know that these teams on the top has to focus on one another. They cannot look down towards them. And Mole Man is doing everything he can to shoot in from the side. Spray down coming in from seven. Where are you? Yeah. If you're hiding that smoke, <laughs> you are going to be found by these guys. Buster just chiming away bullet after bullet. He does have 192 of them left, though, so why not use them? Completely agree. Why not? If you pick up an extra kill, just even do some damage, it could help you later on. As Buster now wants to make the push on down. He's hoping to see them come out of the smokes as he works his way around into this. He can hear the shot. Goes to spray through, nearly connects it. Done. Oh, 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 Buster, that's the way you get it done. But you are out in the open, buddy, and you will pay the price for it. Luckily, your teammates are quick on the trigger. Yep, Frank was there to help out, but he's starting to get pressured from the French team as well. 3D Max are trying to make that run on down. Out of war still in the mix here, and Frank gets down Phantom. One more to go from each team. Team. Who is going to stay put here? They do still have Desperados to deal with, though. Tosera and Calvin still alive, and we know how dangerous they can be once they get into the late game. Seven Esports go out in fifth. Stella, they've got two players left alive in Vac and Moleman, but they're able to see so much from these positions as teams yeah. go out into the open. They can just tap, tap, tap away. They pretty much know where everyone else 3D Max does go down there. Moleman again securing a kill with pretty much uh, no no threats going his way. Vac is playing it smart on the eastern side. Make sure Out of War doesn't cross over. If you can pin them up there, well, maybe with a little bit of help from Desperados, there's a good chance that they can prevent them from going anywhere. And the closer together you can keep them, well, the bigger a chance you can get a Nate thrown in the face and get yourself a double kill. That's what it's all going to be about as Vac continues to do some more damage here. Stella, despite having two members alive, believe they can get the job done. Desperados, though, Ooh. taking a few shots off towards Ben. Managed to get some damage done, but the nade goes out and it will land perfectly. Calvin falls into the trap. And Mole Man, he's going to go in with a finish off. Stella is just picking up all the kills here. Look at Talsera. Look at Talsera. One with the nature. Doesn't want to engage in anything. Get me that placement point instead, and I will do that. And see, he... Bush is not really granting him any favors right now. Nobody's expecting him to be a mole man and Cass. They're full on expecting this to happen in the other. Oh, wow. Look at this. The amount of kills so far. I believe that just put mole man. No, mole man still at nine kills for this game. And Sarah probably could have engaged a bit earlier, but wanted to get the placement. Now he solidified it. But can he pull off this one? 1v2. A 1v2 is certainly possible. It all comes down to what Stella are looking for here. Tozera hasn't made some noise in a while. His teammate went down. Just before Art of War. They have no idea who's there. I mean, Moleman was completely exposed to him when he ran up to Nate, the guys in, uh, in Art of War. And also when he took out Calvin. That's when I was expecting him to start shooting when his teammate was on the fire. But he just went down so fast. I believe it was just two headshots. Boom, boom. And then the Nate coming in from the side. There was nothing Tosser could do there. Is he? What is he waiting for? He must know that it's a 1v2, right? You'd hope so at this point. You'd think he'd... he'd I mean, Vec just got kills and Moleman just got kills. And both have, like, sh um, Stella in the name. Maybe he's waiting for them to maybe get a little closer. I think secretly he's just on Discord at the moment. <laughs> and he's doing David Attenborough. And he's saying, as I observe the two members of Stella, <laughs> look frantically to try and find me. I amuse myself at their lack of understanding of where I may be. Males looking for their missing... What? <laughs> Where were you going with that <laughs> one? Extra player. <laughs> yep. I was just trying to go the more, like, you know, nature kind of, uh, what is it called? You were going to go down some true Discovery Channel. Yeah, like. Discovery Channel, yeah. No, Animal Planet is the name, yeah. Oh, Nate's coming in. Or Smokes. Smokes. It is. Go on, Tozer. What you got? I wonder if they know where he is now. At least within the range of that, or those Smokes. Good split, though. I like this. Mole Man will use the tree as cover. Vax's going to run all the way around. He's going to try and sideswipe Tozer here a little bit. 
Tozer might be able to spot him out first. Mm. Has a good look for it. He's scoping around, but now he could be too far scoped in that he won't Ooh. see it coming into play. Shot coming out towards him. Vax able to get the job done. And a solid win with 15 wow. kills from Stella. And that was majority of the work being done there with only two players left alive. They lost that one player real early on. Vax went yeah. down just as they came up the hill. They took out Millman, went up. But both Millman and Vax played it to perfection. I said it even when they got there. The way that they split, the way that they engaged and mm. picked their fights and shots, insane. And the amount of kills they were able to steal down from the south, yeah. right? So everyone else is just out in the open running, trying to find some trees for cover. No one was really focused on Stella. Not at all. That they